Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to spend just a little bit of time. I got to turn this off, but we're going to keep talking while it's turning off. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been doing videos lately talking about the government, what is a citizen, and what isn't a citizen, what's the definition of citizen. Most people, they don't sit up and do the etymology. I agree with Taj Tariq Bey that etymology is very important. You must understand where the word came from originally. It doesn't matter how they changed the definition. Understanding where the word originated, how the word originated. So what are some of the key points that needs to be recognized about the origination of words? Citizen. Now, citizen, you've heard of Citizen Kane and a Roman citizen. Well, in Rome, the citizens had no power. The king had all the power. And under the king was the Senate. But the king had all the power because the king controlled the military. That's why the United States is set up the same way. The president controls the military. So the president has all the power. Congress doesn't have any power. That's why they gave it all to the president in 1933. All you have to do is look it up. Okay, the king or president has the power. Now, the one thing in the United States they said they were not going to tolerate is the so-called monarchy, having a king. That's why they came up with the, pay attention, four branches of government. There's only one main branch. In the United States, the people are the sovereign. The branches, the legislative, executive, and judicial, represent the sovereignty of the people which is the sovereignty of the nation, not the other way around. They are not sovereign. They never were sovereign. The judicial branch is not sovereign. It represents the sovereignty. Now, the individual, you, me, my grandmama, your grandmama, your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your niece, your sister, your uncle, you know, all of them people, they ain't the sovereignty. Sovereignty in the United States means the collective of the people, that's where democracy comes in, because it's the majority. That's the sovereignty of the nation. Don't take my word for it. Go do your research. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Nobody else talks about it. The United States was supposed to be a republic. The United States was never supposed to be a republic. All you have to do is recognize it. The United States was a democracy. The people were in charge. The people told their representatives, this is what we want. Take this to Pennsylvania, tell them this is what we want, and get us what we want. That was democracy. The people told their representatives, remember, Congress represents the people in their so-called districts. It was not supposed to be a republic. Congress is not supposed to be making laws on their own. They don't have that authority. The people tell them what to do, and then they follow what the people's wishes are. Majority. It is a democracy. It's just a hybrid democracy because the people have elected representatives to represent their interests at three different levels and to make sure there was no tyranny where these individuals could just go in there and say whatever they want like they're doing now. They had to go together. So that's why you have two senates from every state and at least two uh, con congress members from every state to take the wishes and will of the people to the state capital. Again, I don't know why everybody wants to, I know it's the pledge of a stupid allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag for the United States of America and to the public for which it stands. It, it don't stand for no republic, people. Yeah, yeah, I know you heard me say that. I was just quoting what that thing said because nobody pays attention. They, they, they put your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. It's monkey see, monkey do. It's Simon Says. That's what you go through when you go through school. It's Simon Says. They are programming you. And I will tell you, I do like being one of Jehovah's Witnesses to an extreme. Everybody keeps saying, Jehovah's Witnesses is a brainwash. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I literally, I'm laughing because I find it hysterically hilarious
We don't salute anybody's flag. Why? Because there's no reason to salute a stupid piece of cloth. Oh, no, don't you dare talk about no stupid cloth got the American flag. People, it's just cloth. But it represents. That's right. It does represent something. So I'm not laughing or calling stupid what it represents. What I'm calling stupid is that they have coerced and brainwashed everyone into believing that that piece of cloth has the value, just like they've made everybody believe that the piece of paper called the dollar has the value. Dollars ain't got no value. Y'all know that. It tells you they're only good for paying debts, but everybody believes in the pay attention power of the mighty dollar, but they don't understand what is meant by the power of the mighty dollar. They're talking about what the term dollar represents. Remember, Congress said equal power for every dollar. So I've tried to explain to people that federal credits are government issued. They are the equivalent of dollars. They are dollar for dollar. Federal credits are dollars. Which is why I did the video showing you guys that you can monetize federal credits. Well, back to the original reason for doing this video. We are getting ready to put together a program where individuals, you're not renouncing no stupid citizenship. What you're doing is you're saying to them, and it is very, very simple, very, very simple. You're simply just saying to them, hey, I'm not a member of the public. I'm a private civilian. You don't want to be a private citizen. You want to be a private civilian. I'm a private civilian. I am a non-citizen national. I was not born in the United States. I was born in the territory or state of, for me, California. The Supreme Court has already held two things. First, persons of color, the 14th Amendment doesn't apply to, so they're not citizens of the United States. Shh. They, they, they tried, they, that was overturned. Doesn't matter if it was overturned. Back at that time, they stated the purpose of the 14th Amendment, that it did not apply to persons of color. That meant that was congressional intent. That intent has never changed. That means that they had to, had to declare that amendment unconstitutional. They did so by overturning the case. They never went back and amended the 14th Amendment. So the 14th Amendment, according to the Supreme Court and its slaughterhouse decisions, is unconstitutional. Because the slaughterhouse decision says that the 14th Amendment doesn't apply to you, and it definitely doesn't apply to me. Why? Because the 14th Amendment created what's known as a federal citizen, known as the United States citizen. That's a federal citizen. They created that. It didn't exist before. Interesting, ain't it? Go ahead and look at the slaughterhouse cases where they say they created that. Okay, that's fine. So they created a nation of citizens. That's fine. Let them have it. That's what you call the public. That's who they rule over. Remember, Congress rules over the public. Congress regulates the public. That's why it's called public policy. They created regulations for the public. Everybody said, well, the code and everything applies to the federal government employees. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what Thomas Clark Nelson was telling you. They created what's known as franchises. I keep, you keep hearing me talk about Thomas Clark Nelson. Now, he didn't get everything right. The minor things he didn't get right, they were minor. Because we've discovered, you know, some other information since he came up with the 14th Amendment of Trojan Horse and the matrix, the purge, and so forth. Those particular documents, he was very thorough. It, very thorough. Some people have told me, well, some of the things he refers to, it, the numbers are not correct. And that's correct. There were some mistakes. But, however, the actual documents and the actual numbers, they may not have been correct, but the actual subject matter was 100% correct. He just referenced certain, and you'll hear me do it on video. I'll say something about this code or that code, and I'll be 
it wasn't that cold, it was this cold, and you know, it, it, it happens. But anywho, what we're finding, as you all know, you're all giving up consent every single day. The government is talking about having ID passports. What gives them the authority to require you to have an ID passport where they get to store your information? Hold on, let me ask another question. What gives the government the authority to store your information anyway on any level? Now mind you, you're driving a car and they give you a license plate so that they can know the, whose that is because some people hit and run and they, you know, they don't stay at the scene of the crime to take care of the damages. So, okay, fine. Let's make the people have driver's licenses. But hold on, Mr. Officer, why you pull me over? Name and registration and license. No, you can't have none of that. But you're going you gonna to break my window. How are you going to break my window and it's all the way down? Oh, that's what you used to saying to people? Well, what is your problem? You want to, you want to, my name so you can run it through that NCIC? Well, no, you cannot have my name to run it through NCIC. You run it through the National Criminal Investigative Center. And by doing that, man, let me tell you something. If there is something on NCIC, man, that's, you got me testifying against myself. Now you, you got me volunteering to waive the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. I don't want to do that. No, no, I have a right to be protected. So the law doesn't require me to give you my ID. The law just requires me to identify myself. A young man did a TikTok video. He talked about his friend being arrested by the police. He gave him the ID. He gave him his name. And to the present day, they've listed him as a John Doe. They say they can identify him. Well, hold on, homie. If you can't identify him, then why are you still holding him? They're, they're playing games. They set his bill at $50,000, although he's not accused of committing a $50,000 crime. And he gets no hearings. Because he's a John Doe, he doesn't get to make phone calls. Because he's a John Doe, he doesn't get to receive letter communications in the prison system. Now, that's a lie. He can receive general mail in the prison system. Addressed to the name that they have him listed at on file. He's called a John Doe. That is his name on file. Now, watch this. So let me show you guys about that. Can you please help me with understanding a total of 25 cases where a person was listed as either Jane Doe or John Doe in a criminal case? John, stop listening. I don't want it to do that no more. I, I just, I get tired of that. So let's do that right there. I get tired of that junk. Just give me what I asked for. No, that's not what I asked you for. Okay, Doe versus United States, Doe versus Louisiana, Doe versus the Commonwealth, People versus Doe, Doe versus City of New York, United States versus Doe, Doe versus FBI, Doe versus Bolton, Doe versus Shakur, Doe versus Cummings, Doe versus SEPTA, Doe versus MySpace, Doe versus Internet Brands, Doe versus Public Health Trust. Hey, public health trust, interesting, ain't it? Doe versus Hall, Doe versus City of Los Angeles, Doe versus user technology, Doe versus Trump, and Doe versus Backpage.com. People are listed as John Doe or Jane Doe all the time, ladies and gentlemen. 
that does not prohibit them from receiving mail. The scripture says, all persons or any person. I said scripture. <laughs> the Constitution says, all persons or any person. Okay? No person shall be held. Well, a doe is a person. They say they can't identify him, so they denied him bail. They say he's a flight risk. Now, he has state ID. He has state ID. He has social security number. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's what they're getting ready to start doing to some of you who claim you don't have a social security number and all of that stuff. They're getting ready to start doing that to you, denying you all your rights. Because, according to them, your rights only stem from being a citizen. <laughs> because they forgot about the unalienable rights and the inalienable rights. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the games that they're playing now. So I told the young man, at no charge to him, give me a call today, and I will give him an hour's worth of my time. Because I, I look, he's been talking to attorneys, and they've been, they haven't been giving him the right information. The attorneys, well, the, the uh, public defender's office will then do a petition to get rid of the public defender's office. Well, they won't let them file any paperwork. Yes, you can file paperwork as an ex-friend. You can most certainly come in as an ex-friend. As a Technically, I hate saying it, as a member of the public, you have the right to petition the court as an ex-friend, as a party of interest, because the public has an interest in every case. Sorry, they created the public. It's got to be a public trial. You heard me. So the public has a right to petition the court. Or you petition for rid of habeas corpus, but you bring habeas corpus based on constitutional grounds. See, they can't deny him bail. They can't claim he's a flight risk. He can't be a flight risk because guess what the judge did? The judge set bail. So you can't set bail and say he's a flight risk when there's no new evidence in the case. The attorney general says, well, we don't want him to get bail. They made bail. They were posting bail. Bail bondsman contacts the jail and the attorney general puts in an emergency petition to stop him from bailing out. So told him to go after those bonds. Don't just sit up there and let them play these games. You see, the guy is just sitting in jail right now. He's being fed. He's being given medical, but he's sitting in jail. Interesting, ain't it? So, ladies and gentlemen, to keep these things from happening, the reason why this does happen to people is because of the contracts. Right now, they're having him contract. They're having him waive rights. They're going to scare him into thinking that he can't get out of jail. But because they denied him his rights, they lose the case. You see, they don't get to keep on moving. Don't stop. Tell No, they don't get to keep on moving. Forget that. They don't lost that right. They don't get to keep on moving. They lost the right to move forward in that particular case. Now he, I'm, I'm going to advise the guy, hit them from every single corner, every single angle. Bring as much attention to the case, not on social media. No, within the system, the same way I did Francis. The idea was, to hit them at every single level of government. Just that simple. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your data being stored and kept by various agencies, including the government, there is no constitutional authority for keeping your information unless you're accused of committing a crime. Let's do that, okay? Wake up. My identity is my property. Can you give me seven case citations where the Supreme Court has held that my identity, although intangible, remains my property? As secured by the Fourth Amendment, which says I have the right to be secure in my person, comma, property, comma, possessions, comma, effects, and houses. Stop listening. I gave it all of that so that it wouldn't give me the stupid stuff. It's going to give me the cases where the Supreme Court actually said this. This landmark case established that personal papers and effects are protected 
from government intrusion, highlighting that such items representing one's identity or personal information fall under the Fourth Amendment protection of property. The court held that the forced production of personal documents constitutes an unreasonable search and seizure. So when the police are demanding that you show them a, a piece of plastic, they don't have the right to do that. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, create your own ID. Put your name on your ID. Put an address on your ID. You can even put a post office box. You don't have to give them a physical address. They're going off of a statute. I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I have a meeting right now. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. As a matter of fact, I'll continue this in a